Hello and welcome back. Today we're reacting to some more Curse Gazag. Today we have Emergence. How stupid things become smart together. I need to find some things to be smart together with because I'm not feeling very smart today. Not gonna lie. <laughs> Also, I just wanted to bring up really quick, I started a new podcast with my buddy St. Torum. It's called Games to Reality. If you like video games and tying video games into real life discussions on philosophical points, theorizing, scientific analysis, or just general history, this is the podcast for you. There'll be a link to it in the description. Check it out. An ant is pretty stupid. It doesn't have much of a brain. They're not that no stupid. Will, no plan. And yet, many ants together are smart. An ant colony can construct complex structures. Some colonies keep farms of fungi. Others take care fungi. of cattle. They I'm a fun guy. Oh God, the dad jokes. They can wage war or defend themselves. How is this possible? How can a bunch of stupid things do smart things together? This phenomenon is called emergence, mm -hmm. and it's one of the most fascinating and mysterious features of our universe. So when we talk about emergent things, emergent properties, it's basically a property or behavior that emerges from a simpler system that cannot be present or necessarily make any sense from its underlying parts, if that makes any sense at all. Like, uh, emergence would be intelligence. Intelligence isn't a thing. Physically, you can't look at any one of our pieces that make us up and say, hey, that's intelligent. But when you put all those pieces together, intelligence emerges from that. Sort of the same thing as like temperature. Temperature is arguably, in a way, at least the way we experience temperature, arguably an emergent property. Because if you zoom down to just a single molecule, single atom, it What's temperature to it? How fast it's moving around? You can't take a thermometer and it has no meaning, right? Like, yes, there's a physicality to temperature, so it's not necessarily <laughs> the best example, but at least the way that we experience temperature, it just doesn't make sense without that emergence. That was probably the worst explanation I've ever did of anything. <laughs> In a nutshell, it describes small things forming bigger things that have different properties than the sum of their parts. They did such a better job of it than I did. <laughs> Emergence is complexity arising from simplicity. And emergence says that. is everywhere. Dun, dun, dun. Water has vastly different properties to the molecules that make it up, like the concept of wetness. Take oh. wet fabric. If you zoom in That's far enough... such a better example. Wow, I was, I just, I'm so embarrassed about that. I'm going to have to leave it in now because I'm talking about it. So y'all get to see how big of an idiot I am. I told you, I told you I wasn't feeling very intelligent today. I warned you. There is no wetness, there are just molecules sitting in the spaces between the atoms of the cloth. Wetness is an emerging property of water, mm -hmm. something new only created by a lot of individual interactions between water molecules. Yeah. And this is sort of it. Many things interact under a certain set of rules, creating something above and beyond themselves. It turns out that more is different. Mm -hmm. This different property is itself a new thing, and that new thing can couple with other new things to repeat the process. You can imagine this as layers stacked upon each other, every layer made from more complex parts. Could you almost argue that everything in existence is an emergent property of the fluctuations in the underlying fields that permeate the universe, like the Higgs field, etc.? Now there's a thought. Atoms form molecules. Molecules form proteins. Proteins make up cells. Cells make up organs. Organs form individuals. Individuals form societies. Yep. But how can something be more than the sum of its parts? How do ants form the sort of cloudy entity that is a colony? By following a rule set that produces order through chaos. 
For example, let's look at how an ant colony distributes jobs. Let's assume that a colony... I don't know what they're talking about because ants are freaking genius. They absolutely are. The way that ant colonies function and the things that they can accomplish and the hierarchies, the communications, ants are mind-blowing. Let's look at how an ant colony distributes jobs. Let's assume that a colony should have 25% workers, 25% caretakers, 25% soldiers, and 25% gatherers. Ants communicate their current job via chemicals. For example, a worker ant constantly secretes <laughs> chemicals that say, I'm a worker. Okay. When ants meet other ants, they smell each other to gather information, telling each other their job and what they're doing. Just like humans Both do. Both keep track of who they met in the past. Now, imagine an anteater kills most of the gatherers. If this isn't fixed quickly, the colony will starve. Mm -hmm. Many worker ants need to switch jobs, but how do you tell this to thousands of them? Simple, you don't. Our Makes worker sense. ant will still meet and smell other ants, but it will encounter almost no gatherers at all. It counts too few gatherers until it reaches a critical point and then it changes its job. Huh. The worker becomes a gatherer. Other ants will do the same until after a while there are enough gatherers again. Just kind of balances the balance itself out. All by itself. The actions and interactions of an individual are random. You can't plan which ant will encounter which other ant. But the simple set of rules is so elegant that a colony's many operations emerge as a consequence. On an even more fundamental level, hundreds of millions of complicated molecules interact to maintain a robust and amazing structure. A being with vastly different properties than the sum of its dead parts emerges. Yeah. The smallest unit of life, a cell. You could say, too, that life itself is emergent. What is life? All life is doing is following the chemical, the biochemical instructions to survive, to multiply. That's it. There's where do you draw the line between non-living and living? At what point can you break things down and say, okay, this is not alive anymore. These pieces are no longer alive. But you take this piece and this piece, and now it is. Where is that line? How do we actually define that? Of course I forgot to mute my phone. But for real, at what point do you say this is alive or this isn't alive? Huh? How do you define that, really? That's just an arbitrary, emergent definition, isn't it? Hmm. We still don't have a clear definition of what living things are. We just know they emerge from things that are not alive. Cells combine and cooperate. They specialize and respond to one another. And over time, we develop into complex organisms with remarkable capacities. Yep. Your arms and legs and heart are an incredibly complex and complicated system made of trillions of individual stupid things. And yet we breathe, digest, and watch YouTube videos. Hey, How do I your feel cells know out. what to do? Think of the pacemaker cells in your heart. Billions of them need to send out an impulse just at the right moment to collectively create a heartbeat. Our cells exchange chemical information with their neighbor cells to see what they're up to and then decide what to do. Hmm. If it's among a lot of cells that are working on the same task, it will start working on that task as well and sync up with them. Isn't that crazy? There is no mastermind giving commands, just single units communicating with their neighbors and acting according to the feedback they get. What about our most important part? What is the thing that asks these kinds of questions? Life is so basically complex. I mean, really, I know that's kind of like a contradiction, but it really is because if you boil down to the fundamental areas, all it is is a simple set of instructions in cells. And there's a lot of different cells with a lot of different instructions, but they follow those instructions and that's all they do. There's no free will at a cellular level. I, I would argue there's no free will at all, but that's a completely different video, and we've already kind of talked about that. But I think that intelligence is emergent for sure. Life is emergent for sure. But it's also super, super simple and super predictable at the basic levels. And where do you draw that line between being simple and complex, between alive and intelligent?
that's also another thing that we don't have defined extremely well and is also very emergent. Is our consciousness then an emergent property of the cells in our brain? Yes. This question is too big and important. It deserves a video of its own. <laughs> okay, we're pausing this one a lot. I'm sorry, but no, I absolutely do think that our consciousness is an emergent property. Humans have a need to feel part of something bigger, in my opinion. And out of that need, we've, over the long time that we've been around, have developed a lot of systems for filling that need and for coping with that. But to think that we're more special than anything else out there, just because we're at the top of the chain for our planet, that doesn't seem to sit right with me. Sometimes the most simplest explanation is the right one. And to me, if all this other stuff is emergent behavior, consciousness also is an emergent behavior. I don't, I don't think that consciousness is something separate. I don't think there's something separate outside of your physical body that's interfering with that or enabling that in any way. But to each their own. Some things that emerge are hard to define. You can't touch an ant colony, only its parts. It has neither brain, nor face, nor body. Mm -hmm. And yet the colony interacts with the world. Just like colonies emerge from ants, things emerge from humans, like nations. Yeah. What actually is a nation? Is it its population? Is it its institutions? Its symbols like its flag, colors, or anthems? The physical things it makes like guys. cities, the territory it occupies. All of these things are fluid. Populations change and are replaced. Institutions come and go. Cities can be constructed and abandoned. Yeah. Borders have changed all the time for most of history. And symbols get replaced by new symbols. I also, this is really reminding me of, oh God, I can't remember the name. This live reaction stuff is harder than it looks, okay? <laughs> but there's a, there's a saying, and there's a whole story that goes along with it that I don't remember. But basically, if you have an old wooden ship, and over the years that ship needs repairs, and you start repairing it one board at a time. So you're replacing this board, replacing that board, replacing this board slowly. At what point is that ship a brand new ship? Instead of the old ship being repaired. Eventually, if you're repairing every board, eventually that ship will be made of entirely new material. Is it the same ship? Is it? You would say, at least in the context of this video, that the ship is an emergent property of the assembled pieces of it, right? The ship is just an emergence of all of its individual parts assembled and interacting together. How are humans any different? We are just an emergent property of our pieces interacting together too. A nation has no face, no brain, no body. Are nations not real then? Of course they are. Just like ant colonies, nations interact with the world. They can change landscapes, wage wars, grow or decline, and they can stop existing. But they only exist because of a lot of humans interacting with each other. But not just nations. All the complex structures that surround us emerge from us. Even if we don't intend to, we are constantly creating communities, yeah. companies, cities, societies. All of these things are entities that have fundamentally different properties and abilities than the pretty stupid apes they emerged from. <laughs> we don't know why any of this happens. We just observe it, and it seems to be a fundamental property of our universe. It may be the most beautiful and wondrous property of our universe. Wow. As always, these guys do phenomenal work. The music score, the kind of story behind it, if you will, the guidance, the narrator, I love his voice, it's just so iconic <laughs> and so informative, simplified down so that way almost anyone can understand it, but just getting into it enough that it piques your interest to go learn more.
these guys are amazing. I've, I've always said that, and I believe that I always will. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. Go check out my new podcast. I also have a gaming channel that I don't post to very often, but I do once in a while. Hope that you have yourself a wonderful day.